Yo, yo, yo. Welcome one and welcome all to another episode of With the Homies Review, Anime Edition. This episode, we're going to be discussing J.C. Staff's High Score Girl Season 2, baby. Let me just start off by asking you a very serious question. One of the utmost importance. One so detrimental that from this moment onward, it may forever change your existential perspective on life. Do you like video games? Well, if so, then High Score Girl is the anime for you. Need I say any more? Look, man, I just want to say I've been a huge fan of this series since the day that it aired. And you've definitely heard me mention it time and time again on the podcast. So when I heard that there was a second season that would be coming out, and not just some OVA to end the series like was originally proposed, I was drooling from the mouth like Homer Simpson. Really, the only word for it is... I'm just super excited to see where they take the second season, and I think it's going to be a fun ride. So, without further ado... Let's get into it, baby. Look, I know there's only two episodes. I know it's still early in the second season, but I just wanted to talk about it. And since there hasn't been enough of this second season so far to give an accurate synopsis of the story, I thought I would just provide one from the first season and sprinkle in some spoiler-free stuff from the first two episodes. The story of High Score Girl starts in the 1990s the greatest time period in human history, and can easily be summarized as an arcade rom-com. It takes place during the heyday of the 2D fighting gaming boom. You know, Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat, Streets of Rage, Final Fight, the good old days. Our story is centered around Hyru, a 6th grader who spends practically his entire waking life skimming around arcades in the seedy parts of town, oblivious to the world around him. However, One day at his usual arcade, he encounters Akira, one of his female classmates, who is portrayed as the typical goody-goody, you know, the one who gets good grades, takes piano lessons, her parents take her to Aspen every year, and she solely writes in cursive. We all know the type. She may look extremely out of place in this setting, but she was actually a top-class gaming savant. Akira completely outmatches Haru in one Street Fighter 2 round, one after another and their relationship goes on to develop from this unlikely encounter. This story is an otaku's wet dream. The second season feels like it takes off right where the last one left us, but it's actually five years in the future, in 1996. There's a slight recap of the series in the first episode told through the perspective of Akira, with some funny moments that were not privy to us being originally told through Haru's perspective. I won't go into future details and fear of spoiling anything for you guys. Just do yourself a favor and watch it. The whole first season can be found on Netflix. When it comes to animation, I think this series should be the benchmark of how CGI and anime should be done. I myself am not a big fan of CGI and anime because I feel like it draws attention away from the artistic merit of the piece. I think CGI is somewhat lazy and sometimes unpleasant to the eye in this medium. But when done correctly, it can still maintain the typical aesthetic of anime that we all know and love, you know, the stuff we adore, while making the motions, feelings, and actions of the characters all more lifelike and personal, which can add a layer of depth that can be missed from a typical animation style. Just keep CGI to a minimum and I'll be happy. I personally loved how the animators fluidly incorporated a number of these old school video games into the series artwork. It's almost like you're actually watching these players play Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat, all these games, right before your eyes. From the low lit, humming glow of these basement arcades, to the eye popping color of these games flashing across a CRT television with scan lines and all. The show does an amazing job of mirroring the atmosphere and aesthetic of the time period, perfectly capturing the 90s in a bubble. This new OP for this season takes a lot of inspiration from its roots. It's almost done in a video-like game fashion, as if it's ripped directly from the opening of an actual game. We see flashes of chaos from the famous fighting games covered in the series, 
quickly panning between scenes like an action film, scrolling lists of names of team members and developers, as if it's a high scoreboard, and all the far-out wacky colors of the 90s are present in this neon pixelated glory. It's a fun intro that can definitely be watched time and time again. It even gives some subtle hints of what may be coming in this season. From an actual love triangle between Hado, Akira, and Hidaka, to even a couple secret games hidden in the background of these ever quickly changing scenes. The music and sound effects sound as if the creators took a time machine back to Squaresoft headquarters, rest in peace, and had the young and prosperous Nobuo Uematsu handcraft the soundtrack. No, but seriously, the music of the series does an amazing job of helping to create a fun, comedic atmosphere that fits with the time period. From a random Hadouken, or finish him, to a Virtua Fighter double palm strike sound effect when Haru gets smacked, a perfectly placed game over sound effect when he gets humiliated, or blood pumping battle music during intense scenes helps to create a heartwarming and endearing experience for video game and anime fans alike. Look, if you love anime and video games, then I don't need to tell you that this series is a no-brainer. It is a nearly perfect marriage of the two mediums that culminates into a unique and enjoyable experience for newcomers and day one fans that after each episode will leave you waiting in anticipation for the next week. So just do yourself a favor, strap on your Nintendo Power Glove, open up a can of Surge, swallow a packet of Pop Rocks, and take a time machine back to a time before smartphones. Before Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook all ruled the planet. Before we had a literal Cheeto as a president. When kids actually played outside, and you had to be home before the streetlights went off, or you would get your shit pushed in. When computers only existed in libraries. When video games and movies were still great, and rappers actually said something instead of mumbling. The pre-Y2K world. The good old 90s. This is your homie Potter, and this has been another episode of With the Homies Review Anime Edition. And I'm giving High Score Girl Season 2 7.5 Hadoukens out of 10. Hadouken! Thank <laughs> you.